Sorry there, didn't see you. My name's Forky. I'm a white-tailed deer that lives out here in Schmeekly Reserve. What are you doing out in Schmeekly Reserve? You're looking for white-tailed deer? Well, you found me, so that's great. Do you know the signs to actually help better understand and look for white-tailed deer? Well, let me help you out and we can go and discover some more of my friends. But first, let me introduce you to Rhea. She's one of my good friends and probably the one who's gonna help us both find our way because I'm a little lost. I just smelled something weird. Okay, Forky, that's enough. Let me introduce myself. Woo! Hello everybody, my name is Rhea, as Forky has introduced. I am a student here at Schmeekly for my practicum and I go to Point in the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point right down the road. So like Forky informed us all, today we are going to be looking for common signs of white-tailed deer. Now Forky here, he just likes to wander everywhere. But more often than not, white-tailed deer have specific patterns that can help us find them and also help us understand where they move, what they eat, and how many are in a certain area. So today, I'm going to take you on a little journey. So let's get started. <laughs> Starting off, we're gonna look at the basics. So, as you can see in front of me, there is a clear path that goes directly through here. So, what we like to call this is a deer trail. Deer tend to all travel together in groups and they create these very thin but very long zigzag trails that they like to follow. White-tailed deer especially use their scent glands to help them find the way and also follow specific deer like, for example, males looking for females or maybe females looking for babies or a certain deer that they kind of want to get back to. So here we have some white-tailed deer scat. So white-tailed deer scat is very oval in shape and it's usually darker. It looks a lot like rabbit droppings, except the fact that rabbit droppings are more round and they are a lighter color normally. Another thing we can look at here to see if there are deer around is to find the tracks. As you can see here, there is a triangular shaped hoof print and those are white tailed deer hoof prints. And this one's a really nice one. You can see the little indent that would be underneath the hoof where the soft padding would be. Another thing to keep in mind about white-tailed deer trails are that deer are very, very sensitive to scent and any type of change. So the reason why I'm currently standing outside of this trail is because the slightest little change in scent, like a foreign scent to the deer, will scare them and they will likely create a new path. So this one goes here, they'll probably start heading that direction or this direction. They're very sensitive to that and it's actually amazing because when people go hunting, they usually tend to try not to step on the deer trail because of that fact, because the deer will then either go around it or completely just avoid the area altogether. Another thing we can look at is browsing. So white-tailed deer eat a lot of plants, especially this time of year in spring when they're going out here. A lot of this underbrush and shrubbage, they eat, they browse on, they can eat a lot of it, especially if there's a lot of deer around. So how we can tell if it's deer that are eating off these plants is that you look at the end of the plant. Notice how this one looks like it's torn off and there's little tendrils of the pieces of bark and the inside of the plant still left over, that is a sign of white-tailed deer because when they eat, they tend to tear it off. Now, another thing that people get mixed up is when rabbits eat, they have a nice clean cut on the end of it, but you can tell that a white-tailed deer did it if it's a tear or this is an older one, but it's torn off and it just looks like not very clean. Often, white-tailed deer leave behind signs that are a little bit more obvious and easier to find, and it gives a better understanding of if there are more deer actually active and bedding in the area. An example is a white-tailed deer shed that we have here. 
So the male white-tailed deer will usually grow their antlers starting from mid-May all the way to the end of September where they harden and then they will lose them again from about January to April of the next year where they start growing an entirely new set. So this shed especially, you can tell it's a shed because the pedicle, which is this area right here, is very sandpapery in texture and also kind of bub bubbles out like this. So antlers are very, very, very good for a lot of the rodent species and other animal species out in Schmeekly, just because they are literally like a protein bar or granola bar for the animals. So see how there's chewing on the edge of this antler or that tine a little bit more on this one too because the animals will chew them, help file their teeth down because rodents, their teeth just continuously grow. So they need things to help keep them filed down. And also, when I mentioned they're like a protein bar, they're packed with iron, zinc, and lots of protein. Also calcium, phosphorus, and a lot of magnesium. So they're very good. And please remember, if you see one in Schmeekly, leave it alone. Don't pick it up. You can take pictures. Or if you do pick it up, just don't take it home with you. Leave it where it is because a lot of other animals will need it for nutrients. Same goes for deer bones especially. Lastly, a more common sign of deer activity that we can find while walking around in nature especially are deer bones. So this one is Forky's great aunt Janine and she passed away unfortunately but that's okay because her remains have fed lots of wildlife and also it shows that there's a decent amount of deer activity enough where the deer are dying and being born naturally. So if we look at this skull and we look at the teeth you can get an, a rough estimation of how old this deer might have been. So it looks like her teeth are really worn. You can usually tell better by the bottom set of teeth. However, it looks like these ones are not present. But if we look at the enamel and the dentine in the middle of the teeth, and the enamel is the brown part, if it's bigger than the outside, it means that this deer is most likely older because it's more worn down. So I could roughly estimate this deer was probably about four years old, if I can guess, four to five years old. So an older doe, rest in peace, Janine. Well. It was nice to meet you, and thank you for coming out here. I love sharing different facts about all the deer, and myself included, out here in Schmeekly, because we're pretty awesome. Well, I'm gonna get going. There's some grass to eat, and all the beautiful, delicious green plants are finally coming up in spring. I'll see you around. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. I hope you learned some new things about deer activity and how maybe you can find some white-tailed deer out here. I wish there were some actually around. I saw one earlier, but they don't really like when people like to walk up in their territory, so that's okay. But anyway, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day wherever you are and come out and check Schmeekly Reserve because there are tons of beautiful deer out here. Take pictures, have fun, but remember, stay off the deer trails, don't pick up deer remains, don't pick up sheds, and have a good time. Take as many pictures as you want. Thank you.